exciting creature tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the steps that's required to animate a piece of waving cloth and hair fluttering in the wind. You'll see in a moment how easy it is to do it in the creature animation system. So with that, our goal is to make something what you, like what you see on screen, where you actually have the hair and cloth waving around with some wind effects. That's pretty cool. And we're going to do it with a combination of both bone and mesh motors. So without further ado, let's take a look at the meshes. Now, in this scene, I have the, the, the person, the body itself, and then I have cut the, the hair, the hair into two portions and a simple dress, nothing fancy. And it's all mashed up, you know, it's all gone through the meshing process to make, to give them a fair amount of resolution for simulation. Now, typically for cloth simulation, I do recommend a, a denser mesh so that we can get more bendy effects. The higher your resolution, the more detail you get, but of course it will be a bit more expensive. So take note of that. Okay, let's go on to the rigging. Now in rigging, let me increase the size of the bones. Now in rigging, you'll see that what we typically do is we have chains of bones coming down along the cloth, along the sides of the cloth, like so, right? So this allows the cloth to bend and flow naturally. And more bones, the better. You, the creature handles many, many bones very, very easily. So I encourage you to go nuts on the bones. If you like lots of bones, the more detail you want, just go, go at it. Put as many bones as you want and similarly for the hair now for the hair i have on purpose not put any bones for the bendy effects more on that later but you'll see that we're actually going to be able to animate or simulate the hair the hair motion purely using physics mesh soft body motor so i'm going to teach you two techniques in this tutorial the first first tutorial is to use the bend physics motors to achieve very convincing cloth effects and the second part is to use uh, the mesh soft body motor to achieve a very similar effect but in some cases it contains even more detail so you'll learn two powerful techniques in this tutorial if you go into testing mode you'll see that we have you know the cloth ready for action so it it basically can deform the clothing sorry the yeah the, the bones are ready to deform the clothing so it's always good to test out your rig before you start animating or simulating it Okay, so let's start the animation process. Okay, so here I have the character. There is no animation in this character right now. It's completely empty. So we're going to actually animate the cloth and the hair. So how do we go about doing it? Well, thankfully with Creature's procedural motor system, it's extremely easy. So what I do first is I select one of the, one of the base bones of the cloth and I press Control M. That gives me the entire chain down, right? So if you press Control M, that is a shortcut key to, to do that sort of thing. And then basically I can install a motor and I select Ben physics motor. Okay. And let's see what happens. So as, as you can see, it settles down, right? Because it's a Ben physics motor. It simulates the bendy physics of a material of a chain of bones. Now I want to tweak the, the, the Ben physics a bit. So what I do is I will basically adjust the damping to make it bleed energy a bit faster. Okay. And I'm going to loosen up the material a bit. So I'm going to take down the stiffness to 30. There you go. That's more like a realistic cloth action, right? Because cloth is a bit heavier. Okay. So I'm going to do the rest, do the same for the rest of the bones. Same thing. Go in there and install Ben physics. Click on each base cloth bone, control M and install the bend physics for each one of them. Very, very simple. It's not that difficult. And now what happens if we play the animation is you can see these motors here have different settings from the original one, which as you can tell from here is calmer and looks more like cloth. So what do we do? Well, very simple. We copy the motor values from this guy onto the other bend physics motors. And how do you, how do, you do that? Well, you click on animate. And if you move your mouse down, you are going to see something called copy values of selected motor, control shift D, and you can paste them to another motor. That's one way to do it. But the other way, obviously, is to take advantage of the shortcut system. And as you can see, I bound the shortcut. So nine will give me a copy motor value. So you can change it to whatever you want. And paste animation motor values at zero. So nine and zero. So I can come here, I press nine, that will copy it. I come here, I press zero, that copies it, zero, zero, Zero. Done. Now, play the animation. There you go. <laughs> nice, 
simple and natural cloth animation. So that's one step done. Easy. Okay. Now let's talk about the hair, right? So you, you remember that I, on purpose, did not want to actually do the hair. I, I wanted to actually, as in I didn't want to put bones on the hair, I wanted to use a different combination, a, a different way to animate the hair. So I wanted to use a mesh soft body physics motor. So what I do is I select the region. I go to region mode, I select the hair region. I click install motor and I pick physics motor. So this will run soft body dynamics on the motor. Now, if I press play, <laughs> the hair is going to fall under gravity because nothing is holding it or gluing it together. So how do we fix this problem? Very simple. I click on the hair itself. I click edit motor and now I come in, I can increase the radius. I just simply paint in, just simply paint in the regions that I want the hair to be held up. And then I can also increase the flexibility of the hair to change the type of material of this. So I click finish editing. If I play it again, you can see now the hair bounces, right? It's kind of a bouncy feel to it under gravity. Now let's modify this as well, the other part of the hair. So I'll install a physics motor. Again, if I play it, it falls under gravity. I go in, edit the, the motor, and let's start painting this guy, right? Okay, maybe, oops, sorry, maybe I should modify its, modify its flexibility. Okay, now let's play it. And there you go, the hair is sort of bouncy. Okay, now I can take down the stiffness of the hair. It's a bit too stiff, isn't it? So let's try like 500. Let's see what we get. Okay, so it's less stiff. Let's try that again. And if you think the gravity is a bit too extreme, turn it off, very simple. So set gravity to zero. Okay, so now there's no gravity and we're just going to purely drive these guys using wind, right? Okay, so that's the first step done. I'm going to install the wind motors next and drive the whole animation blowing in the wind. So let us go into the force fields tab over here and we are going to install the force fields motor. Very simple, move your mouse over to add field, select the direction force field motor, okay. And I'm going to add two motors, one more motor. So I'm going to have two motors. One motor is going to drive the dress and one motor is going to drive the hair. Let's start with the dress first, right? So let me invis, let me in, make invis the second motor and just show the first motor. And I'm going to click assign field. Now look, here are motors for the bones and here are both motors for the mesh. So I'm just going to check. I'm going to assign the first motor to just the bones. Okay, and you're going to see something very funny in a moment. If I play the animation, oh, <laughs> the force of the wind is just too strong right now. So what do we do? Well, very simple, let's adjust it. First thing you want to adjust is the scale. Let's take down the scale from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. Still too strong. Well, take it on again. Let's try 0 0.01. And that seems a bit more reasonable. In fact, if you want it to be a bit stronger, let's try 0 0.02. Okay, so that looks a bit more reasonable. So that is the scale of the wind. If you want to change the direction of the wind, very simple, there's a new wind fuel widget. You can just drag this slider around, this widget around, sorry. And as you can see, in fact, I can change it over time. I can key this over time. I can drag it from here to here in 12 frames, right? So let's see what happens. So you can see how basically the wind changes the direction of how the cloth is affected. In fact, I'm going to drag it up even more here and let's see what happens. So now the cloth is fluttering a bit higher, right? Because we changed, we changed the direction of the wind. Right, so the next thing you care about is what we call frequency. So the frequency is basically how quickly the wind adjusts its different parameters. So two frequencies, there's a standard frequency that adjusts the angle, the perturbations of the angle of the wind, and then there's the scale frequency which adjusts the oscillations or perturbations of the scale or the strength of the wind itself. Now the first frequency, scale frequency, that is actually affected by this angular delta. See this delta? So if I increase this angular delta, what, what I'm saying is I want the I want the wind field vectors to basically oscillate between two larger angles based off the general direction of the wind. 
Now, if I decrease the angular delta, I'm basically saying I only really want the wind to blow in a certain direction, right? But if I increase the angular delta, just for purposes of demonstration, right, you can see it's, it's the wind is getting blown between two angles. And you can see the, this, look at this field vector, the, the wind field vector is here going between two directions, right? So very two large directions. Now, if I stop that, and now I say, well, let me actually let me remove this key here so you can see it more easily. Okay, so if, so if I were to actually come here and now I basically say I want to take the frequency of the wind now, I want to wind, I want to increase it to 50 so it oscillates a bit faster between those two angles, see what happens. Ah, there you go, see it's more dramatic now because these field, field vectors actually oscillate much faster, much quicker between those two angles. And similarly, if I were to increase the scale frequency, look at the field vector, see what, what happens. So look at that. Now you actually get this up and down, frantic up and down motion, right? So basically, one of them adjusts the scale, the frequency, the oscillation of the scale, the strength of the wind. The other one, the other one adjusts the oscillations of the angle of the wind. And between those two parameters, you get a lot of flexibility. You can get some really, really cool effects right just based off playing uh, based you know based off you playing playing with those two two values okay so i've tweaked the cloth the lower part of the cloth to be something that i think is so somewhat appropriate at least for this the purposes of this tutorial because it blows with the wind and i think it looks decent so let's move on to the hair how do we do the hair well same thing remember we installed two wind field motors i'm going to i'm going to shift to the second one and this time around i'm going to assign field again and I'm going to just pick the two mesh motors. Remember, we used the soft body physics motor, right? So I'll close it. And then, okay, this time around, yes, you can see it looks, again, ridiculous, right? It looks ridiculous, um, but not to worry, not to worry. We will basically tweak it, right? So if we play the animation, you can see, okay, it looks a bit too crazy. So first things first, take down the scale, maybe to 0 0.01, and okay maybe a bit higher. You can see it's actually blowing the, the, the mesh physics itself, which is kind of cool, right? So we're, we're driving the, the dynamics of the hair completely through soft body dynamics through a mesh motor and there's no bones involved. So this is a second way you can do cloth or hair motion. I'm gonna tweak the hair now and I'm gonna adjust a couple things. So first of all, let's try playing the animation. Okay, not very dramatic, not a big deal. Let's increase the scale of the hair's wind fields. Okay, a bit more dramatic. I'm gonna up it even more, 0 0.07. Right, so now you actually get, see this nice wobbling of the wind, this almost cool secondary effect, right? And that's that's accomplished by tweaking the scale frequency. This is where it actually comes in into its own light. Now, if so, let's try a couple of experiments. So if I were to take the scale frequency down, you can see it's, it's more of a horizontal, a vertical, it's actually vertical motion of, of the hair. Now, if I were to up it, if I were to increase it to say 30, you get these high frequency, these really nice high frequency vibrations off the, the wind on the hair itself, which is pretty cool, I think. Let's up it to 50. Now you can see these minute vibrations going on as well, right? And let's up the frequency as well, just slightly. So the angular frequency, you know, the, the angles of, of, the, of the hair actually rotate a bit faster. So, yep, there you have it. So let me just increase the delta as well. You can see it's just tweaking at this point to, tr to try to get to the values that you actually care about. Right, so now you actually see, see that really high frequency, that really cool and nice high frequency vibration that we're trying to get at. So that is what makes it kind of cool, and that's what makes it kind of interesting with the creature animation system. You can easily accomplish these kinds of effects, right? So if I, again, take maybe take the frequency down a bit, so, all right, so now it's way more dramatic. And so I, again, I have the hair. I have the hair blowing in the wind. Let me take this frequency down. Just get to the, okay. So now I have the hair blowing the wind using the soft body dynamics, soft body dynamics motor, purely on the meshes itself. And I also have 
the dress, right? So actually, let's take down the scale of the, of the dress right now because it's a bit too dramatic compared to maybe say the hair, right? So, okay, so there you go. So that's the final result. So very easily, we can use the Winfield widget to actually animate both the hair and the cloth by, by having a combination of bend physics and soft body physics, soft body mesh deformation alters. You can see the first technique was using purely bones and bone physics. The second technique was using mesh soft body physics. Between both of those, you have many, many choices. Uh, I will leave it up to you which one you prefer, right? It totally depends on your preference. Now, I would say the, the mesh physics gives you a slightly more detail. We can get these very high frequency perturbations and vibrations in your motion if you're into that sort of thing. So if you were to zoom out a bit, it actually allows you to simulate hair without actually having to import in different strands of hair. Right? With the vibrations, you can almost fake the illusion that there's many strands of hair, even though there's actually just two big blocks of hair, which is pretty cool. And then for the, the, the bones themselves, the bend physics, the bone bend physics, that you can use to to simulate cloth, any kind of large scale form of motion. And you can combine them. You can even in install another mesh physics on the cloth with the bones to increase the fidelity. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the high fidelity, the high frequency of vibrations, oscillations, and you get the overall swing and second nice sec secondary flowy motion of the cloth. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it very, very useful. And you can see it's super simple to animate cloth and hair in the creature animation system. So thanks for watching.